chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again the median of a trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides in this we have to this is one fact regarding a trapezium that the median now what is the median of a trapezium and what is a trapezium itself let me recapitulate it for you in a trapezium if i mark this quadrilateral as a b c and d then this quadrilateral is a trapezium if one pair of opposite sides is parallel to each other the opposite sides are ab and cd if ab is parallel to cd and the other pair is not parallel if if the other pair is parallel then it becomes a parallelogram but if only one pair of opposite sides is parallel then such a situation is called a trapezium now what is a median the midpoint of the non parallel side this non parallel side midpoint let us say f and the midpoint of the other non parallel side if they are joined together then this line joining the midpoints of the non parallel sides is called a median so i would write this line as this is a median we can mark here this is equal to this and this is equal to this now what is the property the median of a trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides so the property is that the length fg is equal to ab the parallel side ab and the opposite parallel side added together plus cd by 2 that is the length of the median is the average of the length of ab one parallel side and of cd the other parallel side that is fg is equal to ab plus cd by 2 so this is an property of a trapezium and in your exam a question could be that he has given you the length of one side and the length of the other side and he will ask the length of the median that you have to then you have to simply apply this formula you will have to either remember this formula or as i am proving it i am also offering the proof of this formula so you can also see that your programming the logical skills reasoning skills they develop up and if required you can derive this relation just in time also and let us now go to our proof we'll prove it by using this figure suppose this is a this is b this is c and this is d the proof requires us to take a point f on the midpoint of ad which is very much possible because we are starting with this side and we can select the midpoint of this side and through f you draw a line parallel to the side ab let us label this line as l so what is our first step draw draw l parallel to ab through f you see i have drawn l parallel to ab through f i have said nothing about at what point is it intersecting this side bc the simplest starting point is 
that I can draw a line parallel through a point F and the line be parallel to one of the sides AB. Now what I already have, let me mark it. This is equal to this. Next join the diagonal BD. Let us join the diagonal BD. We have done nothing which is not possible. We have done the simplest things started with this midpoint and from F we have drawn a line parallel to AB and then we have just completed this diagonal. Let this point of intersection be called as point P. Now let us concentrate our attention to the triangle ABD. This triangle is one part of this diagonal and we can see that FP is a line drawn through the midpoint of one side AD and parallel to the third side AB. This line will pass through the midpoint of the third side BD by the midpoint theorem. So we can make two ticks here, this one and this one. So one thing we have established is that this point P will be the midpoint of the side BD because this line parallel to AB will bisect the third side. And another thing, FP will be half of AB. By the midpoint theorem, FP will itself be half of AB. Let us write these facts here that in triangle, in triangle ABD by midpoint theorem, by midpoint theorem, we can see that FP will be equal to AB by 2. This is our equation 1. Similarly, if we attend to the triangle BDC, to this triangle BDC, we see that this line L, we drew it parallel to AB, but L is also parallel to DC because AB and DC are themselves parallel. So through P, which is the midpoint of the side BD, a line has been drawn parallel to the third side. And if it cuts here at a point G, then G will be the midpoint of BC. So we can write this fact here in triangle, in triangle BDC, BDC by midpoint theorem. By midpoint theorem, G is midpoint of BC. This is one thing. This is one fact that is available to us, which implies, which implies FG is a median of the trapezium. This FG starts from the center point of AD and reaches the center point of BC. So FG which was drawn parallel to AB is also the median of this trapezium. This is one thing. The second thing. The second thing is that again because of the midpoint theorem, PG is equal to DC by 2. Let me mark this one. 
the uh, three ticks g is the midpoint of bc and pg is half of dc now when we add 1 and 2 1 and 2 left side added will give me fp plus pg fp plus pg that is i will get fg so i will write adding adding 1 and 2 fg will be equal to now this is ab this is dc half half is common so it will add to ab plus dc by 2 which proves the theorem let us move to our next question now this property says the diagonals of a trapezium intersect proportionally in the same ratio as the lengths of the parallel sides. This statement might be a bit cryptic, but let me draw for you this A, B, C and D. This is a trapezium A, B, C, D and the diagonals are intersecting, let us say, the diagonals are intersecting at a point P. We have to prove that the diagonals intersect proportionally in the same ratio as the lengths of the parallel sides. That is, we have to take up the ratio of PB to PD and of AP to PC and prove that these ratios are the same as the ratio of DC to AB. So we have to prove basically that the ratio PB to the ratio of PD is equal to the ratio of AB to DC and which is equal to the ratio of AP to PC. This is what we have to prove or this is the result that the ratio of this to this is same as the ratio of this parallel side to the other parallel side and these ratios are also equal to the ratio of this to this. You can remember this result or if you want then I am proving this result also. So here goes the proof of this result. Let us collect all the information that is available to us. Now let us observe this triangle DPC and this triangle APD. Now can you observe that this angle is equal to this angle? That is if I mark this angle as angle 1 and mark this as angle 2 then we can observe that angle 1 is equal to angle 2 because AB is parallel to DC and this is the transversal and similarly if I mark this angle as angle 3 and mark this angle as angle 4 then we can write angle 3 is equal to angle 4 because DB is the transversal for the parallel lines DC and AB. Now by double A rule this triangle is similar to this triangle. We can write by double A similarity by double A similarity triangle APB is similar to 
the triangle DPC. And let us also mark this also, the third pair. We can mark this as angle 5 and this as angle 6. And we also know that angle 5 will be equal to angle 6. We can write it as the reason is vertically opposite. Now, since these two triangles are similar, we must have the sides proportional to each other. Start with this triangle. PB is opposite to angle 2, yellow. So, we can write which implies PB is opposite to, PB is opposite to yellow and this yellow is opposite to DP, this DP or PD. So, we will write by PD is equal to, next take this pink color or purple color whatever it is this color this side this angle is opposite to ab so i will write ab by and come to the upper this purple is opposite to dc so this ratio should be there and also write the ratio for this blue color now what is the ratio this 4 is opposite to AP. So, we will write it as AP and in the upper triangle that is this triangle, this blue color is opposite to side PC is equal to PC which proves the theorem. Let us move to our next question now. The diagonals of an isosceles trapezium are equal. Let this be a trapezium A, B, C and D. Now this is an isosceles trapezium means that AD is equal to BC. An isosceles trapezium is a trapezium in which the non-parallel sides are equal to each other. So, we will tick this mark and tick this mark. This makes it an isosceles trapezium. What we have to prove is that this diagonal is equal to this diagonal. So, what we mean to say is that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezium are equal to each other. If this is A, B, C and D, then what we need is that BD is equal to AC. You can either remember this result for an isosceles trapezium or I am offering the proof also that you can see. I will need to make a small construction that will overlap this side. So, I am removing all this and erasing all this so that I will be able to complete this construction. So, I will erase this and first of all, I will label the diagrams again. This is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, this is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. And what I have to prove is that AC is equal to BD to prove. And here I will write the proof. For the proof what we have to do is that we will extend this DC, extend this DC outwards 
एंड थ्रू दिस पॉइंट बी ड्रॉ ए लाइन पैरल टू ए डी दिस गोज पैरल एंड इट कट्स हेयर एट एनी पॉइंट ई सो वी आर राइटिंग हेयर ड्रॉ ड्रॉ बी पैरल टू ए डी विच इंप्लाइज विच इंप्लाइज ए बी ई डी इज ए पैरलो ग्राम वाई इज इट अ पैरलो ग्राम बिकॉज ए बी इज नोन टू बी पैरल टू डी सी एंड देर फोर टू डी ई एंड बी ई हैज बीन ड्रॉन पैरल टू ए डी सो बोथ द पेयर्स ऑफ ऑपोजिट साइड आर पैरल टू ईच अदर देर फोर दिस फिगर ए बी ई डी शुड बी अ पैरलोग्राम लेट मी मार्क वट हैज बीन गिवन इक्वल दिस हैज बीन गिवन इक्वल टू दिस The trapezium is isosceles, and further, because of this parallelogram ABED, this BE should also be equal to AD, and therefore, this, this, and this all three are equal. So now let me see what I already have, so that I can reach some good conclusion. mark this angle as alpha this angle as alpha now this ad is parallel to be so if this is alpha and this is treated as the transversal then this angle will be i will mark it here this angle will be 180 Minus alpha, because the angles on the same side of the transversal, the interior angles are supplementary. So, if this is alpha, this will be one eighty minus alpha. Now I have reached this angle. Have a look at this triangle BCE. This is isosceles. This is equal to this. So we can say that this angle. is also 180 minus alpha so both this angle and this angle are both 180 minus alpha and now i have reached this this is a straight line if this is 180 minus alpha then this part this angle must also be alpha why should it be alpha because the angle on the straight line has to be 180 this is 180 minus alpha this alpha added will make it 180 so what is the important proof that i have seen here is that this alpha and this alpha are the same equal angles for an isosceles trapezium now let us shift our attention to the lower picture where the same quadrilateral is there but with the diagonals the thing that we bring from the upper figure is that this angle and this angle they are equal to each other so i'll mark that this angle alpha then this angle is also alpha and another thing we can mark is that this side has been given equal to this side because this trapezium is isosceles now let me show you two triangles here this is one triangle this is one triangle and this one is the second triangle you can observe that 
side DC is common to both the triangles. DC is common to this triangle and also to this green triangle. And one angle alpha of this triangle is equal to this angle alpha of this triangle. So one side, one angle and the third side AD is marked equal to BC because this is an isosceles trapezium. So by the side angle and side criterion, we'll say by SAS rule triangle ADC is congruent to the triangle ABC which immediately implies that this side should be equal to this side which implies BD should be equal to AC which proves the theorem. So if you can remember these results, it is okay. But if you want to see the proof, then the proof is also given this way. Let us move on to our next question now. An isosceles trapezium can be inscribed inside a circle. That is, this result says that an isosceles trapezium, trapezium is a cyclic quadrilateral. Let us mark the four vertices A, B, C, D. So we can say that in other words ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. This is what we need to prove. If you remember the previous proof, we have already proved that these two angles are equal when AD is equal to BC. That is, this has been given equal to this. Now what can you say about this angle? Since DC is parallel to AB and AD can be seen as a transversal, we can easily see that this angle will be 180 minus alpha. Why will it be? Because angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. And likewise, AB is parallel to CD and BC is a transversal. So this angle is also equal to 180 minus alpha. So we can write the proof here. Proof. Since angle A plus angle C is equal to 180 minus alpha plus alpha equal to 180 degrees and angle B plus angle D is also 180 degrees A, B, C and D must be cyclic. This proves our theorem. Let us move to our last question now. The sum of the squares of the diagonals is equal to the sum of the squares of non-parallel sides. So whatever it is, it boils down to this equation. Let me first of all mark the four 
sides of this quadrilateral this is a trapezium with sides a b c d this is any trapezium any trapezium not just cyclic not just isosceles this is any trapezium in any trapezium square of this diagonal ac and the square of this diagonal bd is equal to the square sum of squares of non parallel sides and also add to it two times the product of the lengths of the parallel sides i am not giving the proof of this it's a bit long so you can better look up some textbooks for that but usually it is better to remember this result if it is possible but i still don't expect any question directly on the basis of this property but in any case some question falls through then you can see that the sum of the squares of the diagonals is equal to the sum of the squares of the non parallel sides and twice the product of the two parallel sides